Well, a very good afternoon, everyone, and thanks so much for joining us today. My name is Sandy Elson, and on behalf of the Travel Professional Community and TravelProfessionalNews.com, I want to welcome all of you to today's webinar, and thank you for taking time out of your day to join us. Our host today is KHM Travel Group. KHM Travel Group is one of the nation's leading host travel agencies. The KHM Travel Team, based in Northeast Ohio, works daily to support, educate, and advocate for over 4,500 independent travel agents across the United States who are following their dreams of selling travel. Our speakers for KHM today are Bill Coyle, Cami Schumann, and Amanda Bailey. Let's meet our speakers. Bill Coyle has been a travel agent since 1994. In addition to selling travel, Bill is also a vital resource and advocate for travel agents as KHM Travel Group's Director of Agent Education and Programs. He uses his years of experience to add value to agents through the development of online courses and resources, webinars, and live events. Bill brings a spirited passion for travel to his involvement in American Society of Travel Agents and the AMR Resorts Advisory Board. Cami Schumann has been in the travel industry for 25 years. She owned an agency with her brother, Bill Coyle, whom I just introduced, for 16 years and then became an outside agent while she raised her children. As supplier relations manager at KHM Travel Group, Cami maintains relationships with KHM Travel's key suppliers to coordinate promotions and updates to communicate to KHM Travel agents. As KHM's Travel Digital Marketing Manager, Amanda Bailey oversees the creation and distribution of content across KHM Travel Group's digital platforms. Her background is in content creation for websites, blogs, social media, and email. Amanda is passionate about sharing her knowledge to empower and educate agents about marketing their business. Our speaker's topic today, as you can see on your screen, is how to set yourself up for a successful, busy season. Please remember that you are all muted, but we welcome your questions. You can type in your questions at any time in the question area you see on the right-hand panel of your screen. When our speaker's presentation is over, we'll take as many questions as we can. So let's turn the microphone over to Bill, Cammie, and Amanda so they can get started. And first up is Amanda Bailey. Welcome, everybody. Welcome. Hello, agents. Um, thank you, Sandy. Yeah, thank you so much, Sandy, for the introduction. We're excited to be here. As Sandy said, um, I'm kind of the moderator for these two very experienced agents, not related to them at all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, we're, we're very excited to, to be here and to have them share their knowledge with you guys. Um, and hopefully this is helpful for you. So yeah, we're going to be talking about the um, right now, actually, is the time you should be setting yourself up for busy season. So that's really going to be the meat of what we're talking about. And then some, um, let's talk about, yeah, let's talk about what we're covering. So yeah, when and what is busy season, setting a goal to reach. Bill feels very passionate about that and has some, um, you know, markers for you guys to hit before the end of this year. And then we're going to share the top three things that you guys can do to help you get to that point where you feel like, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready for this busy season. Um, what to incorporate into your marketing right now to set yourself up for success. We're going to talk about, you know, getting a promotional calendar a little bit. We're going to be talking about month to month. So October, November, December, what, what can you be doing right now? Um, and then also how to manage your time once busy season gets here, because um, I know that <laughs> that can be a hectic time. We have time. no life. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. Since you have no life. <laughs> so, um, yeah, we know that there's um, some KHM agents out there. There's, you know, some non-KHM agents out there, but we really hope that this is, this is helpful for everyone, you know, no matter where you are at in your business. So um, with that being said, I'm going to let... Cami and Bill talk a little bit about, you know, stepping back and saying, okay, what is busy season? What are we getting ready for? So I don't know. Yeah. Well, I remember when, when Cami and I worked together, um, Cami would always say to me, don't make any plans to go anywhere. You can't go to hockey games between January and March. And I always thought, geez, why is that? And then I realized starting about January 10th, oh my gosh, the phone is ringing off the hook. Now we were lucky to be in a brick and mortar agency, right? So we had people not only walking in, we were, of course, this is back in the, the mid to late 90s. So we were advertising the newspaper. We were on the local buses. We had signs, et cetera. So it was a little different than what you're doing now. Most of you are 
home-based agents. So it is, how do we draw that business into us and how do we get prepared for it? So I like to say January through March, but I will be honest, um, it's the first time the snow falls, especially being in Northeast Ohio. You know, we have a lot of people in the Midwest. Some of you are in the East. Um, when that first snow falls, the people are already thinking, get me out of here, get me out of here. And then that phone starts to ring. And then if you're, if you're lucky to have that cold snap lasting all the way through, it could start earlier. It all depends on where you are and exactly what your clients are going through during that time period. Mm -hmm. It really is. And, and you need to be prepared for those calls. So you need to do your homework now. So when the calls begin, if it's next week, if it's uh, at the end of the year, if it's the beginning of January, you know what to tell your clients that are calling you. And this is the best time to look at your past clients and reach out to them and say, listen, the snow is coming. It's going to be cold. Do you want first crack at getting your vacation booked? Because in January, February, and March, you know, it's a lot like tax time, right? You want to get everything done up front right when you can. So if you can start to look, and if you look at the pricing now and it's not great, you can say, on, on this Saturday in November, I know a sale is going to be coming. I'm going to book your trip that day. But if you don't know what your clients want, you can't book that trip that day. So doing your homework now is so important. Yeah, and I love that idea because, um, you know, it's interesting that we – some of us don't partner with our with our suppliers enough. They've done millions of dollars of research. They know when to put promos out. They know when people are thinking about traveling, especially throughout the different regions of the country, right? So I think it's important that we use those and actually put them into play. How are we going to start to promote these? Let's tag along with what they're saying, especially those um, suppliers that work with agents only because you're getting the, you know, the firsthand knowledge and everything else. So you want to get that out to your clients so they're prepared. I love your idea of saying, you know, it's, it, it might hit on this day, it might hit on this day, so be prepared for it. So at least they're thinking about it, right? Mm -hmm. So that you can be prepared for that call because you've put it out there in advance of them. However we do it, social media, media email marketing, whatever our means of, of, of getting knowledge out there is, I think you need to be prepared in advance. Right, and, and there's nothing wrong with, you know, bringing that notebook out, you know, having that notebook next to you. And when you're talking to your client, taking their full name on their passport, taking their birth dates, so that when you see that sale on their dates come up, you can go right in and book it. And Bill had a great point, you know, with our KHM agents, they get our email you know, once a week, telling them the promotions that are coming up. If you are not with KHM and you are with another host agency, pay attention to those emails. You have to watch the email to, that will tell you when the sales are coming and what promotions are coming. And you can even go back to last year's emails and do your research and say, okay, I got this email for last year on this date. It should be coming. I'm going to watch for it and I'm going to book my clients then. Yeah. So another part of this is that the busy season is also when a lot of clients are traveling. So, you know, you have that kind of stress in your mind of getting a hold getting of the them, flights, right. you know, getting, making sure they have the right paperwork and everything like you said. So that's an, that's an even different side of it where you're not necessarily promoting, but you're actually servicing right. your clients. Prepping our clients for travel is yeah. in my, the way that I handle it. And I mean, I have to be so forward, but I spend most of my time telling them all the things that could go wrong. And it's because we've had to deal with years of not being prepared for what could go wrong, whether it's a snowstorm or whether it's some, some other situation that, that they couldn't get out. Um, and I think that we need to let them know that what are the steps they need to take in case something goes wrong and going through those documents with them, making sure you understand the flights, the connection times, what might be available for another flight or a flight before that, just in case something happens in particular with cruising. You remember the days where we used to argue about uh, going in a day early on cruise. Right. And I'd be like, who, you don't need to go in a day early. Need that, right. Everyone needs to go in a day early. And it's sometimes because from our, from some of our regions throughout the country, and I'll use JetBlue as an example, they might have a flight today, but that next flight is not for three or four days. So it's not like you're just going to be on United Delta or American where you can just flip on to another flight and, and it's available. Those flights are not going to be available. So I think your point about going in a day early is very critical, especially for cruises. But um, the prepping of, of, of getting your clients ready to go for the trip, letting them know what could go wrong um, is critical. And I think also I wanted to talk about what they need to do in, in order to prepare for what flights are coming up. So I'm not sure where that comes into in the slide. Yeah, we'll, I don't we'll, want to we'll get there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we'll get there. Great. Okay, cool. So their goal right now, um, and this is a more or less a Bill Coyle philosophy, but yeah. I think it's a good rule, you know, to be thinking rule. and setting a goal for yourself for what to get on the books for next year until um, or before the end of the year. Excuse yeah. me. So. Starting, in, starting in June or July, I start to think about 
how can I get money on the books for next year? What can I do? Can I hold group space? Is there a way that I know I can do promos or get this information out to the clients for spring break? Not that I just want to plant that seed then. But then when it comes to booking time, you know that when the kids go back to school at August 20th time to the September 20th time before Halloween, people have got to be thinking about, you've got to be planting that seed about how can I get this money on the book? And then I start to look at the number on the book and I'm like, I'm itching up. Right now I'm a little fortunate because I have a group going in January. So I had that money on the books, but it, that's only every other year, right? So now I have to make sure that I have, I like to use 30% as, as a marker for me to say, I know I'm going to have a pretty successful year if I'm going into the year with 30% of my previous year's bookings on the books for the next year. Right. And if you're doing your homework, if you're, if you're really looking at your client base, this is not even going outside of your client base, those referrals, um, maybe your Facebook posts, that new business, if you go back from just past business of your clients, you know what they like. So you can book cruise cruise right now. It's on sale for next year sure. and get that on the books. The land might not be on sale because the, the tour operator might not know how much the, the air is, right? But the cruise, you know you can get. So book everything you know you can get right now for next year, do it now. If you need to wait for some, wait for some, but at least you're getting what you can do and you're not overcharging your client by doing that, do that now. Yeah, you're yeah. getting them the best deal. You're getting them the best deal now. It's, oh, it's not a problem. And cruising, you know, I mean, look at Disney, you know, Disney Cruise. Even Disney, you know, it's gone before you know it. You need a family of 12 in two rooms and Disney, um, it's gone. You know, that's why you have to do it as early as you possibly can. Yep. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. And I think it goes, I mean, because I'm not a travel agent, but it goes to the consumer mindset too. Like that's where my mind is at. I'm thinking about March, April, like beyond yes. for next year. Spring so break. if a travel agent can get into their client's mindset, <coughs> like you're saying, then this 30% or whatever you want to set for yourself, it makes a lot of sense. Like yes. you have to be thinking that way. And Amanda, don't you wish you worked somewhere where I could walk up to you and say, Amanda, <laughs> where do you need to go on vacation in April? <laughs> yeah. And, and have one of our agents do it for you. <laughs> right. That'd be great. I never know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we're going to get into the top three things that you can be doing to prep for busy season. Um, and the first one is understanding those flight schedules. I love, I love yeah. this. My second Bible, because mm -hmm. um, I have a primary Bible, my second Bible is always having the flight schedules in front of me. So whether it's Vacation Express or Apple Vacations, any of our charter flight destinations, because it's interesting, I printed it this morning, so I've got Milwaukee, Minneapolis, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh, uh, St. Louis, Rockford, they're all listed right here, right? So we know what days those are going out, the dates are there that are very clear, what days are going out, the number of nights that they're going out, which destinations are going to. So that I can start to realize, okay, from my market, I know I've got Thursdays and Sundays for a, a particular flight for Puerto Vallarta, or Tuesdays and Saturdays for Jamaica. And then of course, Vacation Express has the same. And that's why this is so great that we have agents from all over the country on the call, because it's there, it's available for you. Same with Vacation Express. So I think that that's important to know where those nonstop dedicated flights are going, those charter flights are going, and understanding those deals, helping plant that seed for your client. Because the client might not know. Every client that comes to you says, we want to go away for a week. What does that mean to them? Is that six nights? Is that five nights? Or is that seven nights? Mm -hmm. Plant that seed. I'll never forget when we'd have clients Every coming week, in. They'd, they'd be like, always I'm say, I'm going to go on Friday to St. Yeah. Lucia. Well, yeah. there's no plane. So now you're going on Saturday. Yeah, you're going, we tell you. you tell yeah. them. We cannot let the consumer drive us. We have to drive the consumer. So knowing this information, having it planted firmly on your desk so that you can refer to it immediately mm -hmm. is a critical state. I really believe in that. And then I'm also a big proponent of knowing my major three, right? So I've got to know American, Delta, and United. I sort of know in my mind because I've been doing this so long, but I want our agents to start to understand what flights are going where, what's the connection time, and how can we get them the best get them on resort or uh, on board the soonest. Can we get them there by noon and, and available? And what flights are gonna do that? Yeah. And then of course, Southwest, you know, understanding that market as well. And really agents, you know, I referred to um, our portal earlier, our KHM agents know that, you know, you can go to Vacation Express right now, our 2020 schedules on there for the charters. All host agencies should have a portal where you can go on. If not, you can go to the website of the um, supplier, but you Good should point. have it at your fingertips um, if if you're working with uh, with an agency that is supporting their um, their agents, and and most most uh, hosts do that. So just go to your portal and take a look for those flight schedules. Yeah. 
Very good point. So th this seems like, uh, uh, I don't want to throw you guys off, but this seems like a lot to know. You know, so that's well, where do you? Where do well, you that's start? a good point, Amanda. And yeah. it's really knowing your market, right? Yeah, if, yeah. You, if you're in Minneapolis or Chicago, that's a huge market. New York's a huge market. Those agents have got a lot. You know, they've got <laughs> wow factor. But in a smaller market, Cleveland, Milwaukee, um, St. Detroit, Louis, Detroit, Pittsburgh. those aren't as difficult to understand. It's you once you know, once you sort of get the feel for, oh yeah, Mondays we've got the six night charter to Punta Cana, or on Tuesdays we've got the five night charter to Cancun. Mm -hmm. You've sort of got an idea for, right? And that's the ones you wanna focus in on. Most of our agents, most agents in the US have most uh, regional clients are not really national. Some of them do, and that's good to have that information, but most of us just deal with people that are local. So I agree with you, it is a little cumbersome to know that, but, and, and now that we have a couple uh, companies out there with charters, it, you've gotta to get to know those, but, to be honest with you, we all find ourselves migrating to one booking engine or we've got a relationship with one supplier. Not that one's better over another, but that you migrate toward one, figure out who that is and start to understand that and start to understand their flights. I'm just, I'm just gonna give a little bit of advice to new agents, even veteran agents. You know, we're sitting here talking, saying we, we move the needle with these clients. We should be telling them, don't feel bad to be the smartest in the conversation about travel. Your client wants you to lead them. They want you to say, if you leave on this day, it's $500 less, I can get you a suite at the hotel instead of having you leave on this day when it's $500 on the air and no better room. So don't feel bad about leading your client. And, and as Bill and I always did, I do and I still believe in this, do your research on the hotels. Are we, we're going to get to the hotels. Mm -hmm. So we're going to get to the hotels. So I'm not jumping. I, I apologize. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I agree with you, but there's always those those uh, situations where the doctor or or one of the workers says, when your client says, I can't, I can't go, go on, on that day, day. Right? right? So now you've got to know, okay, well, I've got this great United back. flight or Delta right. flight that's going to fit you perfectly, um, but it just has a stop and a connection. Right. And they normally can afford the suite. So go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the point you go with. We, we, see, we see in the industry that sometimes when you start to mention a connection, people are like, oh, no, you know what? Suddenly I've got that extra day right. off. I'll just take that extra day off, or I'll go the next day and take fewer days to match that charter and flight. keep it in mind, people don't connect people through winter weather areas. <laughs> yeah. Make sure you check that. You know, and, and I have to argue with you on that point because um, when Mike played in Minneapolis um, and I'd go there, they had that airport handles the snow know. better than anybody in the I'm world than Detroit. <laughs> okay. All right. Chicago, Very good. Yeah. I, I get worried when Atlanta gets hurt with a right. snowstorm because yeah. they don't know how they to handle snow at all. Down. They're a disaster. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Oh, man. I, I can't promise that a fight won't break out. I know. <laughs> guys, between Bill and Cammie, can't promise that. Um, okay. So we're moving on to number two, which is knowing those new resorts in Mexico and the Caribbean, which is obviously you know, this, huge. This is just what's going on in the industry. Mm -hmm. We are so blessed to have partners that are growing new hotels, building new hotels, um, converting hotels, making them fabulous. Remember, we would only sell new builds. Right. Well, now, you know, you've got really, there's better construction going on. So, uh, but I have to say, out of all the chains that are out there in the world, focus in on just a couple. Don't try to know every single chain when everything is opening, but know when new places Places are being built. Mm -hmm. Our clients want new. Consumers want to know what's new, right. and we want to look like the hero introducing them to new. Now, of course, there's always that first three months to four months you want to be cognizant of, make sure and check reviews because they have growing pains, opening pains. Right. But I love the idea of from five to six months out, book that place, take that risk because I think it's worth it. Well, and the reason it's worth it is, I mean, you know, we all live in our house, you know, 10 to 12 years into living in your house, you need to repaint, you need to do the baseboards. It's completely different in the Caribbean and Mexico. The weather, you know, it takes its toll on these hotels. Sure. So if you're five years into a hotel and that hotel has not done any update or any maintenance, your client is not going to be happy with it. So make sure you're not selling the oldest hotel in the area just because it's $300 less a person. Absolutely. You won't get that repeat business. Those people will never call you again because their time means more to them than that $300. So. Do your do your research. Well, you nailed it, Cam, and I really feel those are online agency um, bookings, really, for that for those. I, I don't want to say lower level chains, but I mean, some of the ones that are just not, you know, they're just churn and burn. They're not concerned about loyalty. They're not concerned about upgrading. I really think that that's, that's not for our clientele as a travel agent. Mm -hmm. I really believe that we should be selling a product that sets us aside from the online agencies. And I, I think don't, that, don't feel bad. If your client comes to you with a travelocity or 
an online quote that they got and that hotel is not one you're not comfortable with, tell them, don't sell it to them because I'll tell you that client will not be coming back to you and it's really about the repeat business that you wanna keep yes. your, first of all, your, your neck is on the line, right? I mean, you want people to refer clients to you and if you're putting them in an old rundown hotel just because it shows online that one room that they redid, don't do not do it, right? Yeah, it's yeah. not worth it. And, and you know, I have to say though, I struggle sometimes in this because I have my go-to hotels. I have my go-to resorts, right? They're listed all over our boot camps. And I realize, oh my gosh, I maybe this has been a couple of years and I better start to look at these and, and maybe visit them or get feedback from clients that have been there recently, um, look at reviews and think, geez, maybe I need to change that in, in, in my repertoire of what I'm offering and make sure that I'm only offering my clients something that I feel extremely comfortable with. Or that so I know lucky. someone was just there. Right. You're so lucky to have such a good supplier relations manager yeah. <laughs> that I can yeah. guide you yes, to the ones true. that are keeping that your hotels true. updated. And, and, and belonging to host agency has opened those doors for me, right? right? It's because it, right. I was focusing on just a few resorts. Now I can I can open that door a little bit more, but really I still want to do those that I touch, feel, and feel comfortable with. And for our KHM agents, you can go on the Facebook page and see I'm all the glad, reviews. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I, I mean I will do that. When right. I have friends would ask me, like, what do you what, yes, what, do you, what do you know right. about this place? What do you know about this there. place? I go into that group and I put that in, or even just the destination, mm -hmm. you know, I put that in, boom, there's it's a great resource. Like 40 yeah. comments about right. one place. And I'm sure lots of there. hosts have a Facebook page. So go yeah. on there and look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Um, did you guys want to talk at all about what's coming? You know, like what, what to be talking about? I know you had mentioned Disney. There's a lot of Disney. Well, Star Disney. Wars is opening. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are all things you need to know. You should mm -hmm. be going on the website. You should know the open dates for the for 200 the, travel agents just rolled their eyes when you said Disney. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. I still have kids. I got to go to the opening of the Star Wars, um, mm -hmm. the Millennium Force. It was incredible. Um, and, and now the new rides opening. So that is a spring break summer. If you, you need to gear up for that yeah. um, and know know what uh, what rides are coming out, what parks, um, see if there's any new dining, take a look at the hotels. Um, and that's really for any destination. Yeah, know? I think I think that what what we're the message is that we're trying to say is control your destiny as a travel agent, right? I mean, we we take anything that comes to us, but can we convert? Can we can we change their mind and, and get them to think the way we're thinking? Because it's beneficial for us as a travel agent for repeat business. It's beneficial for them as a consumer because mm -hmm. they're going to get the most bang for their buck. Something that we're familiar with that we have knowledge of, and that we should be. I hate the word push, right? Because push is a bad word, but that we should be conveying to our clients. And they, and you know, they're savvy. They'll look online, they'll find a destination, they'll see a hotel maybe somewhere, and then they'll call you and say you want it for $2,000, right? And you know that over the water bungalow is $20,000 for the week. Yeah. You need to have an alternative for them that says, I care about you, you know, I'm going to gear you towards this way, and you won't be disappointed with those this hotel on your budget. Love that. That right? is so true. It's, it's important to know. All right. Are you ready for number three? Yeah. Okay. I think so, gosh, do I know what it is? Three <laughs> oh, gosh. Yeah. oh, look ship. at this. Now, look at this. Yep. All of our cruise agents just sparked up. And, you know, one of my favorite things is, of course, to do the pre inaugurals on these new ships. And you get on there and you're just like, oh my gosh. You know, and you're just, you know, anything from the Oasis class or celebrity and, and what uh, Norwegian's it's bringing incredible. out. It's just amazing. Yeah. And the new sky is coming out. Um, I, it's just so exciting. And I think that, I think we need to convey that to our clients of that, that level of excitement. And what is it that we love about that ship? What is it that we love about those new destinations that are in the Caribbean? I, I think we're getting to that, but, um, is it, is it something that, that you feel is beneficial to a wide level of consumers or that is it going to narrow down to specific clients? And then when you get back, you're going to, you're going to pinpoint those clients that you want to market that to and say, there's something about this that I really think you should right. try. You know, because we can all talk about, you know, there, there's a general idea about new and big ships, right? But let's narrow it down to what we loved about that particular ship. Right. And, you know, it's not just about the ship. It's what the company is doing nowadays to be eco-friendly. You know, are you telling your clients that are recycling and um, are really worried about the environment? There are so many companies that have ships that are so conscious of that. Yes. And that's a really good thing to talk about. You know, if you're if you're in that, I teach yoga. And when I'm in my yoga mind with my yoga friends, that's all that they're worried about. And if I can go back to them and say, this company is now making sure they have no more straws. Everything is paper, no more styrofoam. All of those things that really mean something to them, they'll take a chance on going on that cruise, which they might not have before because they just thought it was a floating 
you know, hotel on the water. Yeah. You know, they right. might not have even considered it. You know, and I want to say, and this is a controversial topic, but it's it's that consumers are are tending. What I see from my clients is that they're tending to to lean away from just going on one particular line. The loyalty is there, but they want to try other lines. They want to see something about another cruise line that they, that maybe they haven't seen or that they were on years ago and now they they want to revisit or they want to try something new in a different market. And really, don't be afraid to talk to them about that, right? right? We 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 have to qualify our clients to know that you know if they've been royal their whole their whole lives of traveling, should they be okay trying something else and what is it that they're willing to try right so, or they've uh, aged out of it you know i mean or their, no, or their lifestyle is their life or they changed. have more money that's you know correct. i mean any of those things they've grown up a little you yeah know? you're right they're not the kid we used to take care of right, right out of college well that's a very good point yeah that's a very good point. <laughs> um i love the idea of i mean you just mentioned the in-person um ship inspections but also doing these virtual ship inspections oh, i see some really cool cool it's, ones where you feel like you're there you feel like you're right in there yeah absolutely so I, I love, I love that, the, that that the lines do that um and then also making sure that you are knowing if ships are moving around because i feel like right now is when you know they're talking about when the cruise right. lines are, are just, announcing those sort of just things. got that email i just got an email yesterday mm -hmm. another ship out of galveston Carnival. you know yeah, it's unbelievable it's crazy i agree with you so mm -hmm. you i mean and you might not know that if you haven't gone on which you have three months <coughs> before this busy, busy time comes. The wave go, season. Yeah, go to every one of the websites and look to see where their ships are. Mm -hmm. And then if you've got somebody that's thinking something new and they've never gone out of Galveston, you can send them out of Galveston and well, be plus, confident. Uh, and, and I love the fact that, remember what it was like, we sold a lot of three and four night cruises, mm -hmm. right? We thought that that was a good intro because those were newer ships. Now they're, you know, yeah, they were they the became ships, older ships, right, right? right? Now what's happening is you see that they're putting some some better uh, hardware back into these shorter sailings. But look what they've done to Coco Cay. Right. I mean, look what they're doing to Harvest Key. You know, all right. of these other places. There's a lot of cool places to go back to in the Caribbean that at one time it was like, geez, I don't even need to get off the ship because right. I've been here so many times. Well, and that's our you know our goal this year here as an organization is to reintroduce the destination on a ship. So maybe um, tell them about the turtle. You know the turtle experience and we're swimming with the pigs mm -hmm. you know those yeah, things sure it, it, we all have those wacky clients that want to do that <laughs> stuff you know they want to swim with a pig and if you're the one that you know sends them that text message and says with a pig emoji do you want to do this they'll be all about it right. and you can have that sale in the books right now yeah good point so, um uh, we also talked yesterday about you know how our agents are able to, you know, our team stays up on this. You guys obviously know our agent support team. They're always doing webinars. They're always doing Amazing. the lunch yeah. and So yes. when our agents call in and they're like, what about the supplier? Where, you know, how yes. should I book this? What should I do? They are also staying up on it. So, you know, in addition to the suppliers, they have that additional resource of us right yeah, here, right. Our, okay. our support team knowing about. You and if you're it. all by yourself, like if you're an agent all by yourself, Go on, go, I mean, really, there are some, right? I sure. mean, I, there are agents that are just selling. Mm -hmm. Try to align with some other agents. You know, if you're not comfortable and you don't want to do that host thing yet, or you're not confident in yourself enough to spend the money to join join a host and you want to try it out longer, try to align yourself, you know. Um, there's all kinds of groups. There is. Yeah. In, in every market, there's a group right. of travel agents getting together and just talking about different things. Uh, meet with a supplier at a Panera mm -hmm. Bread. Do whatever right. you have to to get outside your comfort zone and go and learn about that product. And Bill and I, honestly, really, I mean, we are here. If, if anybody needs anything, we are here to talk to because we just want this industry to thrive. We've been in yes. it long enough. 9-11 happened to all of us. You know, it was a tough time. And so we, we definitely want this um, industry to keep thriving and going. So. Well, if you think about what we've been through, the commission cuts of 95, uh, 2001, 2002, and then- 2008, um, the recession. 2008 with the recession, 2009, right. H1N1. Right. I mean, what, 80% of the people going to Mexico and the Caribbean canceled because right. there was some bug out there. That never really happened, right? It right. was nonsense, sort of just like the Zika virus. I think that that whole thing is nonsense. <laughs> but I mean, I'm just saying that anything that anything that's happened, we haven't really seen that too much in the last couple right. of years. So the it's industry not, is on this right. upward swing and right. the agents really need to take part of that because consumers are looking for travel agents more than they ever have. Yeah. They need that advice because there's so much new product. There's so many new resorts opening and they need travel agents. Right. Yep. And I mean, not everyone's a cruise specialist, but the cruise right. industry is just, oh, you gosh. know, it's right. nonstop. It's nonstop. What is there, 27 new ships coming out in the next three and a half years? Right. Crazy. That's so exciting. Year. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Well, look at the it's river cruise industry. The right. river cruise industry is through the roof. Right. right. 
If, we're not on, if you agents are not on the River Cruise bandwagon, I'm telling you, you need to get on that River Cruise right, bandwagon and right. start to understand those products that are in the river in the rivers. Sure. <laughs> All right, so we've gone through the top three things um, to learn. Obviously, this is kind of cool. like a you know schools in session for the next couple of months. It sounds like yeah, <laughs> you should right. be using this time to educate yourself. So then. Um, we're going to be talking a little bit about how to use all this information um, to help you market yourself, which we've kind of touched on a little bit. One of the things that, that we have is actually it's on the KHM Travel blog. So it's, I mean, anyone can go there. There's a link to it. You'll get a, um, you know, we can send us out an email or anything like that, but that's for the whole year. So it kind of maps out. It, it's an email calendar, but you can use it for, for anything, you know. I love just, this uh, calendar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it should be our media. third Bible. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> no question. So it gives you by month, you know, what you should be putting in your client in front of your clients to get them thinking, okay, right now, um, cruising. November, that the spring break time. And mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the last minute I love holiday. The last minute holidays. Right, right. So holiday weekends in January and February. January and February. Please mm -hmm. capitalize on those, everybody. If you're not capitalizing on those dates of January and February, mm -hmm. um, you know, sending people. And then don't forget, Bill, what do you tell everybody? When should they be working? Well, you know, I, I think, and I think we're getting to it, but you yeah. talk about those travel mm -hmm. times. And I remember you saying, you cannot take off Martin Luther King Day and you cannot take off President's Day. And I'm like, what the heck are you talking about, right? So but those became, our phone started ringing at 8.30 in the morning on Martin Luther King Day. All of those people are off, right, on vacation. You've mm -hmm. got people that haven't booked something. Because don't forget, there's a lot of people that are getting into January February that haven't booked anything. Well, they either right. you know, had financial struggles getting they to Christmas. Was, and they didn't know how much their tax return was going to be. They didn't know, uh, well, the tax now return they money know. that comes the tax return in, I agree money with you. Is huge. But the, the, that day is a big booking day. We need to be prepared. There's reasons for Black Friday. I mean, when Black Friday hit the travel industry, I thought, well, that's the silliest thing ever. No one's going to book. And I go in, the phone's ringing off the hook on a Friday right after Thanksgiving, right? Yeah. So I think that if, if you've got to be prepared for those calls coming in because there's savings out there. Our suppliers are putting savings out there. So I, I think they need to be prepared for that. Right. So so right now, these last couple you know months of the year are really crucial for getting like we talked about the cruising for 2020. So getting the posts out there. Sorry, about I the, jumped way ahead. I know, Bill, no, sorry. <laughs> really back. Yep. Um, so getting those new ships out there, those new itineraries, those new ports out in front of your clients yes. when they ask, getting them, you know, in email, on social media, uh, however, you know, wherever else. Snail mail. You're, you want to put something in the mail. Yeah, yeah. 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 absolutely. Well, invite, having a cruise night. Yeah. Oh, There's nothing wrong night. with that. Having mm -hmm. them in. Yes. Yeah, that's a, that's a really good point. I you know, agree we're, with you. We, Talk to our readers a lot now about travel nights yes. and planning something specific. So I love, Popular I love thing. that idea. Um, and then, you know, the holiday weekends we talked about, December. This is like, I love this. I think, I mean, I just love when businesses take the end of the year to really like reflect, yes. show gratitude for their clients, um, and then also remind them, hey, like I had a great year. I hope you had a great, you know, trip, whatever the trip was we planned this year. Let's talk about 2020 if we haven't already. Right Absolutely now. plant that seed. Mm -hmm. Well, and just Definitely. touching on this, I and I'm only talking about this because I have children and I have nieces and nephews, and I just got all of the emails from all of them asking me to give five emails so that we could do the magazine drive. Have you uh, guys gotten any of those? Yeah, I just got that. There is nothing wrong in the month of December sending that holiday card out and say, listen, if you refer five families, you're going to get a hundred dollars off your next trip. Right. Yeah. There's or, no uh, do these private promotions. transfer, right. some added something, value to the trip. Something for your trip. Yep. Have those people excited, you know. And in that card you're sending them, send them a twenty-five dollar gift certificate. You know, sure. say especially with the vendor right, clients. Of course, and and just see if you can make that connection just to get more business, more referrals. Because mm -hmm. if you have people that are booking, they typically have friends that have money to book. You know, they're not hanging around with people that don't travel. They're talking about their travel and they want to go either together or they another family might want to go. Yeah. So why not be top of mind for them? We um, I had a really great idea from an agent um, at our event last week, and she said that she kind of gathers postcards like she collects postcards throughout the year. And she'll use those to send to her clients oh at the end of the year. Gosh, that's a great you know? idea. And so it's kind of like that whole you know, just keeping travel on their minds yes, and giving that. them a beautiful picture I and having a hand that. I know, I thought that was, maybe she's listening, I don't know. I, don't know. <laughs> I just gave away That's a secret. <laughs> but I thought that that was, that, is awesome. that was Amanda so, talking, not yeah. Bill right. <laughs> um, So yeah, I mean, there's, there's so many opportunities there. And I mean, I, I really like the idea of handwritten I stuff. Love at the you got to write, oh write those cards out. I agree with you. <laughs> sure. All right. So, 
now we're in busy season after all that. Yep. And you have another and, goal. And again, um, be, because we'll start to see kind of a drop off in that first of May um, from the from the Mexico and Caribbean bookings, you know, from the, the hot spots, uh, because it, it turns toward a different booking um, demographic during that time. We want to have at least another 30% on the books before the end of April. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's critical that we know because um, we, we got to capitalize on that busy season, have about 60% uh, of our business done by the end of uh, April, and then we're going to feel comfort, comfortable for the rest of the year. Because really, and, and let's look at our financial picture and how does that look? What do we have on the books for the summer months and the fall months and then moving into those next winter months? And I think it's important to, to realize that and segment that out and make sure that you're understanding what your business looks like from right. a financial picture. It's important for budgeting purposes. And if you like, say you heard from a, a client that they're getting married the following October and one of your client's child's getting married the following October, you can wait until March, right? You can, or April, and you can call them then and say, you know what, it's the time now. The deals Let's are book out. your honeymoon. Let's get it on the books. And then that's your next next quarter or third quarter yes. or fourth quarter of the year. So you have it on the books. Keeping track of what people are telling you is so important. You know, so you can reach out again and, and yeah. get that booking. I have 40 post-it notes on my screen. I know. We're the worst with that. <laughs> yeah, I right. need a notebook <laughs> or the calendar. Yeah, right. <laughs> so, you know, it just, I guess to summarize, by the time you get to this January through April busy season, and we're going to talk about time management now, but you should already feel confident about the cruises, about the hotels, about the flights. Right. You've like done that's, your that's really the, right. the gist of this to, to help you save time. So you're Once not, you're not, yeah, <laughs> and you're not burning yourself out by doing that work during busy season. So the only thing you're burning yourself out doing during busy season is making money. Bookings. Bookings. Yep. One after another. You've already done your research. You're not spending an hour finding the flight for the client. You, you know where to go. You know which carrier to look at. You know what city to go out of and what hotel to put them in and what cruise to put them on. Well, I love this. I love the second bullet point. You know, we've done our research. We we didn't get burned out. You have burnt out. I love that. That's yes. hilarious. Um, and don't keep shopping yourself. People, please stick to stick to a couple suppliers. We don't need to out shop ourselves. Once we're putting that itinerary in front of the client, they're looking at it like we already did our homework. We already think that that's the best itinerary. We don't need to send them four, five, and six itineraries, right. maximum two, maybe three if you have to, but why, right? Because you're already picking what's best for them, but really narrow it down to one or two suppliers max. And, that, and, yeah. and that's, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to say, I mean, it doesn't seem like an ideal time to have to start and learn a new supplier. Correct, yeah, right. absolutely, that's right. correct. <laughs> and, yep. you know, a couple, just a couple tips. This is what we talk about in boot camp. You know, a very good way to qualify your client, which, you know, when they're sitting in front of you, you have about 10 minutes to do that, or they're on the phone or they're texting you or emailing you is say, you know, on a, on a regular basis, where do you like to eat? You know, are you uh, Max and Irma's? Are you, Out back. Uh, right, yeah, are you, yeah. or are you a high end, right? Sure. Because you can Please. really know in your mind what hotel to put them in by what their lifestyle is like. And there are times when you can fit somebody in a budget um, that might be a nicer hotel because it's on sale, you sure. know, and, and maybe they're spending $300 more than they thought they would, but it's the difference of a hotel that is an outback caliber instead of going to that high end steakhouse, you know? Yep. Good point. Very good point. Qualify them. Uh, we, we talked about this a little bit, but just being strategic and planning time off. And I guess the moral of the story is that you really can't. Wait, who's taking time off? off? There's, no, there's no time off. You know, I, I agree with you. You do need to have a, a set of uh, a couple of days off. As long as you're upfront and honest with your clients at the beginning that you're going to be off Tuesday from until noon, or maybe you're taking a couple of days off, whatever the case is, make sure that they know in advance, right? right. Because every day is a busy day during that time and you need to be strategic about it. And, 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 and I love your next bullet point here about the hours. Our most profitable hours for years were between 4.30 and 6.30 or 5 to 7 because it was you've already sent out the itinerary maybe the husband and wife had a chance to talk about it and now they're calling you back with a credit card before or after dinner or on their way home from work mm -hmm. i really think that those are the most profitable hours you've got to be prepared to take those calls and close those deals yes. all the way up until seven or eight at night right and no, they're creating that calendar right to yeah. send the clients out yeah, yeah yeah so another great way is to give your clients the option to schedule something with you you know to yeah. give them that 
um, yes. ability. So they have, you know, so that you guys are on the same page. Okay, I'm going to talk to this person then. That dedicated we, time. Right, exactly. Yeah. So we use Acuity here. I know Cal Calendly is also a good option. Um, Bill, did you talk about the, the local school calendar yet? I oh, gosh, that's that is critical. Classes. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we always have uh, at least one or two school districts, maybe three school districts, depending on your location, um, in front of you so that you know. Oh. So that when the, you know, it's so funny because the, the parents will call and say, I think my kid is off that. And I'm like, you're like, oh, no, I know you're off March 23rd to March right. 30th right. or uh, until um, April 4th or oh, well, you right must be off. Yeah, right after Easter, you're right. off the week of Easter, whatever the case is. Having that calendar just makes you look brilliant and it really helps you plan for not just this coming year but next year as well so i love having the school calendar. and if they have little ones you know and they're not afraid to take their kids out of school you know you can say to them you're going to save x amount of dollars by going at an off time from the break time that's correct or even taking them out of school early that's you know, correct if you have little ones there's and, no and we have agents from all over the country on the call but you know new jersey has winter break oh, they've right. got spring break they've got uh, fall break um, and, that, and it's the same way heading out to the far Midwest. They have different breaks than others, typical spring break time. Right. So take advantage of that, right? That's multiple breaks that you can book group space into and sell into that um, so that you're preparing for next year or make sure and know what those specials are. Mm -hmm. And you can always email your clients. You know, if you see a good deal, just shoot it to them and say, this looks great. Yeah, you send them on a, a quote or itinerary. You never know what they'd want to do. Yeah. Yeah, it's important to... Take those notes. Keep those How many notes. of us get an email with a sale and you're like, oh, I've got to see that. I need that. Every time the today. local chocolate <laughs> store sends me an email, I get in the car and drive there. I'm like, I got to go. It's 20% off today. It's the craziest thing ever. Oh, yeah. We'll never forget the day Bill ran out to get chocolate covered pretzels. <laughs> yeah. What happened that day? It was crazy. He came back and it was mad. Yeah. Or, or the other one is Dairy Queen. As soon as Dairy Queen is a commercial, Debbie and I are like in the car. We're driving we're to Dairy Queen because we have to have that new peanut butter parfait. <laughs> All right. Well, I think that about wraps up our slides. Um, I know obviously we have we have Kate Jim agents on the call, but and you know how to reach out to us. You can always reach out to us via phone, email, live chat. Mm -hmm. um, we're here for you guys if you want to learn more about us. Um, and maybe Sandy's going to talk about this when she wraps up. But um, you can go to our website, call us. Um, we are uh, all this crazy. I yeah. need to tell you. Oh, we're so fortunate. <laughs> we're very yeah. fun. <laughs> yes. Um, so yeah, Sandy, I don't know if you have, if there are questions or, um, uh, yeah, anything. we do have some questions and thank you. That was an amazing presentation. So much good information and, uh, oh, several agents have commented on how motivating your, your presentation is. Um, we have a couple of questions from back at the beginning of your, uh, talk. Um, one of our agents wants to know, when you're talking about knowing your airline schedules, she says, how about those of us who don't live near a gateway city? How are the promotions done differently to, to their clients? You know, it's interesting because we just had that meeting with Delta Vacations this morning and they are, the Delta in particular talked about uh, the markets they're in, Raleigh, Durham, Birmingham, mm -hmm. um, some of those lesser markets right. that are not, you know, main hub. hubs for them. Right. And, and I was so shocked to see that while their connection time, they finally are having better sprawl. And I know American is as well because I look at American, American, um, we talk to the vacation people, so they're doing a much better job of that. United is, is working on it. I think United is still looking at the big market picture, but look at Southwest. I mean, Southwest has great connecting flights, hopefully a single connection in most cases, but understand the difference between direct and nonstop. But that, that is such a good question. I think it's practicing. Go online. Just go online Google and start to it. practice those flights. I go to kayak every single day just to look at what's going from where to where, right? And I and I just learn from that way so I know, okay, the 725 is connected to the 1025 in Atlanta, so we're going to get them in there by noon or by 1 o'clock. So really just practice it. I know that not all of you are in those large markets, but there is a lot of sprawl from our major airlines understanding your needs. And even like a JetBlue or a Spirit or a Frontier, they're putting air, they're putting planes in all different locations. Yeah. So what I do is I just go to the Google bar and I'll put CLE, MCO, you know, the day I need, and all of them come up, and it gives me the list of carriers. So that's a great question. Yeah, I love to practice. Mm -hmm. Fabulous. Thank you. Um, this is a sort of a related question. You were talking about contacting clients during the first snowfall or when the temperature starts to get cold. Uh, what about people who don't have bad weather ever? <laughs> people in South Florida or Southern California? What well, uh, techniques do they use? It's so interesting to talk to the agents from Arizona and uh, South Florida. And my response is typically look to those other destinations. The river cruise market is amazing, right? Because I love, I love the idea of selling a, um, a, a river cruise market from 
from Phoenix during um, Christmas market time, you know, or, or any one of those. So there, there's a lot of other markets to look into, um, Europe, South Pacific, um, any one of those markets are better than, because they don't typically, we don't typically see our people from Southern California and Arizona going into Mexico or the Caribbean, right? They sort of have that. Some go so to what other markets? you know, they'll go down to Cabo. Yeah, they might go to Cabo if there. it's just an easy to right, get to if they're right. looking for a, 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 that type of destination. But I love to look at those other markets. Canada, New England in the fall right. is a great sale. Obviously, Alaska for a cruise tour in mm -hmm. June, July, or August is a nice thing to look at. And that's where I start to look at the differentiation of what those other markets are besides Mexico and the Caribbean. Right. And you can also, you can really look at what's trending at the time. Like Delta is going to India right now. Yeah. You know? I mean, uh, Asia is huge, huge market. And just look, you know, typically Florida, you know, it's retirees. Can they go for those 21 day cruises that are the same price as a seven day? Right. And so look at that. Look at what you have available to you to then sell to that market that might not have that inclement weather. Yes. And I love uh, like rail bookers or any one of those that's doing the um, the west coast of Canada. Mm -hmm. Those are great options for some of those people that just want maybe a three to four hour flight to get up to Vancouver. Um, and then all of a sudden they're on a, an awesome rail trip. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hopefully that helped. You know, we have snow. So sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good question. Um, a couple of comments. One of our agents says, I feel it's very important to educate your clients on not only the resorts, but the whole travel experience that they can expect to have. It, it, it's like I was saying about that, prepping them and going through that. Most of my discussion is you got to go through TSA. It's a nightmare. Then when you get there, you got to go through customs and customs is a nightmare. You know, and, and I agree with you. It is that whole discussion. What's the number one thing we tell our clients when they're going to Mexico or the Caribbean? Avoid the timeshare people, right? right? Yes. As soon as you get through, through, as soon as you get through the luggage, you get out of there. You get out of that airport and you go see the the local uh, DMC who's taking you to your airport or to your resort and avoid the timeshare. So there is so much to talk to your client about, and the clients are like, "Wait a minute." And they're not even thinking about that. Then tell them how much cash they need, the fact that they need suntan lotion or or uh, sunscreen, rather. They need bug repellent. I mean, these are all very, very important things to be talking about your clients. <laughs> yeah, <I'm not> exactly. <laughs> Actually, you should just let it all right, out. Right, right. Um, but I love that agent saying that because that is true. There's so much more to the process than just the hype part of it. Oh, you're going to have the greatest time of your life. No, you're going to have a miserable time until you get to that point where you're having a great time. Right. And the, just, to, just to touch on that a little bit more. There are so much, there's so many opportunities after you sell that package to sell them excursions. You know, we partner with so many companies, Viator is one of them. You know, go on there, see what they could do in the port. You can make money on all of those excursions. Don't just send them there and say, best of luck to you, right? Yeah. Plan their days and for them. Star. Plan their days and let them let them know that you're there to help them book those. And then you'll be making that 10 to 15% on the trip. Yep. On the, on well, it's just like our cruise clients, right? They need help with excursions. They, they need do. advice with excursions. Some right. of them we're not making money on unless we're using a third party, which is recommended. But um, you, you've got to walk them through the entire process. Right. And also, there's a lot of money to be made from selling insurance, not to mention that everybody should yeah. have yeah. insurance. If you are not selling insurance, and please sell it when you sell the trip. Yeah. Don't wait. Sell it that day. Your client wants offer you to tell offer them. It offer day. it, sorry, <laughs> offer it. Your client wants you to offer that insurance to them. Yes. If not, hey, they're going to find someone else to buy it from. They'll go online and put in travel insurance in and buy it right online. Yep, true. Um, one of our agents says that she does a promo uh, to incentivize her clients that they get uh, a uh, an onboard credit for every referral that books something. Well, how important that. are referrals in this uh, travel agent? Well, it is. That is our industry. Referrals is our industry because who? What are we marketing against? The behemoths of the world, Travelocity, right? Well, how do we stand out against these big online agencies, right? That are all over Trevago, for God's sakes, Bookit.com, Booking.com. How do we stand out against them? It is that personalized service that says, I'm going to add value to your trip. My favorite thing to do is pay for private transfers or book that upgraded seat from um, coach class right. to the premium class. It's $29 or $39. Maybe it's $89 depending on what you're making on the trip. But I love the onboard credit. I think it's a good added value and something that we've got to consider. Right. Not that, that should not be the primary thing that we're talking about to get them to book with us, but that should be something secondary. And thank you so much for booking with me. I'm going to go ahead and put an onboard credit on your, on your cabin. Right. 
That's and huge. In this day and age, and I fail these miserably all the time, these phishing emails, people are always trying to, you know, they, they run into the fact that sometimes they get an email and they're asking for a trip and it could be a scam. Sure. So why not have that one client that lives down the street from you refer 10 people that they know? You know that those are all good people. They're not somebody from another state trying to get a credit card or yep. money or fishing to get something from you. So, you know, put your stock into what you know, and they'll refer the good people that they know. Yeah. Well, I, I want to say one more thing with this. Vulnerability is not a bad thing. When we have vulnerability in our lives and we talk to people about, hey, listen, I, I kind of need to get another five bookings or another 10 bookings. The clients love to help others. Right. Look what happens when people go on Facebook and put down, uh, what is that when they need money and they, they put that link okay, on there? Yes. Yeah, or any one of those. Yeah. It's like, all right, well, let's give this guy money. We don't know these people. Right. Right? So guy. when we talk the to people, exactly. When we talk to people that we know and we're vulnerable to them, they love vulnerability. They want to be able to help us. And sometimes they're not even looking for anything, just the fact that we want to be they're successful. Right. How can we make you successful? Right. Fabulous. I love that. Uh, we have one more um, question, and uh, you guys are going to love this one. <laughs> one of our agents wants to know, for new agents, where is the best place to learn all of this information about hotels and cruises and deals and what and how to sell and how to market? And it is, it, you know, not to be a commercial for a KHM, right. any host agency. Mm -hmm. I really feel host agencies now, we know a bunch of partners in the industry that are host agencies. They are doing such a good job educating Great agents. Companies. When Cammie and I started, we bought the, we bought the agency from my mom and dad in 1996. We were corporate agency, right? We were doing airline tickets every single day. That was our business. We had to learn the leisure business. We had to learn the leisure market. And we sat down with our rep from Apple Vacations, uh, Funjet Vacations, and started to talk about how are we going to get people on your product? So it was a big learning experience. Now you can learn online. There's so many, there's so many different ways the to travel institute. Yeah. CLIA is a very good place to go. <clears throat> but I really believe that joining a host agency gets you all of that stuff right and it opens the doors for you and it aligns you with people that are like-minded right they want to be successful by helping others um, with a great experience of travel and so if you join the right host that is in it for you know the, the client and in it for the agent to make money and also fulfill the client's dreams um, you'll be doing good do your homework right go online research host agencies you'll be able to find what other people are saying about their host, good or bad, right? Good or bad. Yeah, and I mean, we have, I mean, obviously our whole team here, but one of the best ways that our agents learn is from each other because, you know, right. there's people who are brand new, there's people, agents with us who have been doing this for 10 or 15 years, yes. you know, yes. so they have gone through it and, you know, just having that <coughs> that network, I mean, we do team ups, sure. like right. team ups, there's a Facebook group, um, you know, there's just like the personal connections that agents make that I really think are invaluable so to them. Important. Yeah. Very good question. Fantastic. That's great. Um, we're going to wrap up now. If we didn't get to your question or if you think of something after this webinar is over, our speakers have very generously put their contact information in, on the screen right, down, right now. So jot down their um, email address and their phone number. They have said they love helping people, and I believe it because you three were such a huge help today to both new and very experienced agents. So uh, I really appreciate it. Our host today has been KHM Travel Group. And our wonderful speakers have been Bill Coyle, Director of Agent Education and Programs, uh, Cami Schumann, Supplier Relations Manager, and Amanda Bailey, Digital Marketing Manager. Thank you so much to all of you. This has been fantastic. Thank you, Sandy. Thank, thank you, you Sandy. very much. Thanks so much. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Yes. yes thank you, agents. Have a great day. Okay, I want to add my thank you to the agents who are in on this call. We appreciate you taking time out of your day to join us today. I know you're happy you did, and you got a lot of great information. So enjoy the rest of your day, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.